Preoccupied with a single leaf, you won't see the tree. Preoccupied with a single tree, you'll miss the entire forest. Don't be preoccupied with a single spot. See everything in its entirety, effortlessly. That is what it means to truly see. This is one of, if not my favorite quote in all of Vagabond. It perfectly encapsulates the way Musashi would have to go about learning and growing, but I also think it's an amazing quote that everyone should take into consideration for many different things. The journey of Musashi is one of a vagabond that strives to be invincible under the sun. The fascinating aspect of his journey and what makes Vagabond as a story special isn't just the interactions between the characters, but the internal moments far in between. By not only focusing on the physical conflict that pushes the character, but also focusing greatly on the moments of isolation and the internal battles and allowing that to push the character even further is what I think takes this story to sort of the next level, if you will. Allowing us, the reader, to form a deeper connection with said character, the struggle in these moments of self-reflection are incredibly relatable, and to quote the line from Song Sulphur, the longest hours you'll have in your life are the ones you sit through to know if you're right. These internal struggles often require us to change our routines, behaviors, and take action in order to see the change we want. But I think the key to that, which is what we see often in the character of Musashi along with other characters in the series, is a change in perspective. The quote at the start is one that deals with perspective and mindfulness, the way we see and perceive things to be, and missing the grander picture because of focusing on one thing, a reality formed off of our experiences, one based in one track minded obsessiveness, and the answers we come up with during moments of self-questioning. What about these internal moments of self-doubt, where we see Musashi as a character in the story questioning his very reason for doing things? He realizes he's only looking at the leaf, but why? Why is the need to get stronger so important, the desire to be invincible under the sun? I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but nonetheless it's a perspective on strength that he acquired from the actions of his father, a hatred and a desire to overcome his father. One could say he was looking from the view of one with eyes like a beast. With this hatred and this desire to become invincible under the sun, Musashi at the time Takezo believed he was strong. From his outlook, he was, and his relentless pursuit would only continue to take him to new heights. This was nothing but a leaf that had fallen from the tree, and he had done nothing but stare at it obsessively. Yes, he had seen progress, anyone does when you focus on something so intensively, but he was limited by the little he truly knew. And the first step was realizing he knew so little. Reborn, he is no longer Takezo and is now Musashi Miyamoto. As the story progresses, Musashi would find himself against some of the best in combat. Each of these fights pushed him to new heights. But not just his wins, but even more so his losses or what one could call his moments of failure. It's in these moments of defeat he truly has to question his methods of fighting in the first place. In a way, we can even look at this and completely change our own way of viewing failure in and of itself. The moments of loss or defeat shouldn't be seen as just failure. Did you lose? Well, yes, but instead of allowing that to create this fear of failure that therefore inhibits your performance, instead we can view it as an opportunity to learn and grow. If we only know success without any resistance, without any loss, then why would we ever need to correct any negative behaviors we could possibly have? We become stagnant, because why would we need to grow if what we have at the current moment works so well? It's the moments of loss that Musashi is able to rethink his perspective, grow in his mindfulness, realizing that he has been staring at the leaf, and he can now start to see the tree. We get caught up in things such as failure to meet expectations, one set by others, but usually on ourselves, comparing ourselves to the success of others, and not focusing on what's right in front of us, which is the steps we need to take in order to advance in our own path. We fear failure. We shouldn't view our failures as what defines us, but view it as the experience we need to go through at times in order to then achieve the success that we desire. He had gained more experience now and would continue to do so in his goal to be invincible under the sun. But why did he do such a thing? Why did he need such a thing, really? Would he really be happier knowing he had achieved it? His losses showed him the path he was taking to a certain degree was wrong, but he had still a long way to go. His mindfulness had grown and therefore so did his ability, but what was the point of it all? This internal conflict now resides as his experience and perspective which go hand in hand change. He now fought each opponent learning how to defeat them. He was seeing each of them like a tree, focusing on a new one when he needed to overcome them, all while fighting and learning about the truth of his desire. With his past experiences, he had developed a viewpoint on life in the way of the sword. It took more experience, one of failures, to make him see that the way he was going about it was wrong. Now changing his perspective to see beyond what he originally could now to the point where he could question the intent behind his desire, because as he continued to climb to reach the heavens, he only grew further and further away from it. And that was because his entire way of going about it from the beginning was mistaken, as he would go on to learn. 
After defeating over 70 men and being a little bit handicapped because of it, he had now achieved the title of greatness, viewed as this invincible thing, but yet he never really felt that way. Had he become stronger? Yes. Was he now viewed as, as invincible to a certain degree? Yes, of course. But it's really interesting to see how he grew as a character, once preemptively going out and seeking conflict, and now he draws a circle telling all those to not cross it and yet they do. Before, he had believed that becoming invincible under the sun meant defeating the strongest person out there, and yet all that did was take him into this spiral of death, one that never ended. It, it, I love the scene where he's cutting down the 70 men and he's thinking to himself like, haven't I done this before? What am I doing? What's the purpose? Yes, he had gotten stronger, but in reality, it was just like the monk he had fought long before. He was just simply in the same space, in the same exact place even, and yet he was just covering it. Yes, he had gone up, but he hadn't really moved forward, and those are two very different things. And I think it was him realizing that being invincible under the sun was really just this term that kind of meant nothing. What mattered was becoming one with the sword. And I think this is an extremely beautiful message because sometimes we can do things and pursue things with the goal of greatness, and it can be driven from a place of hatred, of grudges we hold on to to the past, and yet instead we completely miss the entire point, which is the love for the craft itself. And this could be anything in life, whether it's consecration, sports, or just yourself as a person. There's just so many different ways where we could view this and understand that what really matters is the love for our craft. Not being driven by hatred or by need of validation or our insecurities, but also being driven by love smiling, enjoying the very thing that we do. And it's this change in Musashi's character that becomes incredibly evident. The person he is at the beginning of the story and who he becomes later on are so, so, so incredibly different, you wouldn't even have guessed that they're the same person. Because before, in this pursuit of being invincible under the sun, yes, he'd become stronger, and yes, at some point he did become invincible under the sun, by title, but he wasn't really truly free, nor was he really fulfilled. Earlier, he had questioned whether or not it would fulfill him, and now he had realized that it really hadn't. And it was later on in the farm arc where we see him find fulfillment in doing something else that's beyond winning and defeating an opponent. And that's where we truly see the realization with Musashi's character. At the start of the story, his perspective on strength was one fueled by hatred, one of relentlessness that showed no mercy. But yet near the end of where we are in Vagabond, he finally realized that it wasn't hate. What he needed was love. What he needed was to show mercy, kindness, being caring. And other stories tackle this as well. I think Hell's Paradise, which is one that I've tackled recently, does it well. But Vagabond and, and the way that it's able to go in depth about it, I think it's great. Now he was able to not see the leaf, see the trees, but now he was able to see the entire forest. The entire picture of what true strength really is. And with this, he was able to evolve even more as a person. What really gives life meaning for him isn't defeating his enemies but if not being able to protect and love the one he cares about. Now he is truly connected to the heavens. Now he is really invincible under the sun. What he had wanted for all along was there, he was just going about it in the wrong way. And so it was this gaining of experience and change in perspective and growing in mindfulness that allowed him to achieve what he was ultimately looking for, to grow in mindfulness, to not just look at the leaf, to not just look at the tree, to look at the entire forest. Not just focus on one specific spot, but if not to look at the entire picture. And with that, we're able to truly grow, truly change, and truly see.